Say you're shopping in this Armani store in Hong Kong, then your friend calls. You answer the phone and leave the store. For Armani, you're a lost customer. But then the next day, you're sitting at work looking at your phone, and you get an Armani ad reminding you of your visit from yesterday. Wait, what happened here? But I didn't give any information, I didn't like register my name, I didn't register for an app. If you have a smartphone, your phone is constantly uh, sending and collecting different signals from GPS, Wi-Fi, so on. So we use those signals to understand your location. That's Miran Miranyuk. He started a company called Cosmos, which tracks shoppers offline and helps stores market to them online. We don't need you to install an app. We don't need you to connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Cosmos is in more than 100,000 stores in which it can track location-based activity 24-7, and it's tracked more than 1 billion smartphones. It's so precise, it can narrow down where you stood in a store to about a six-foot radius. So we can tell that someone was trying the makeup, someone was trying fragrance. And six feet is really just a few yeah, steps. Maybe like two steps. Cosmos doesn't actually install anything in the store, but they do need to physically visit so they can map out the space and understand the Wi-Fi signals in different areas. Cosmos is able to know your movements because it buys the data from the apps that you've already given permission to to know your location. And it's not hard. 400,000 apps are sharing data with Cosmos. On average, seven apps have permission for location tracking on a typical smartphone in China. So a store can now track a phone that was in the fitting room, but never made it to the cash register. Then, using anonymous IDs based on your previous locations, ads are purchased on the likes of Facebook, Google, and WeChat. And that's how you get those targeted ads. The ad on your phone could prompt you to buy it online or go back to the store. Your technology can also track if I stood here and then went across exactly. the mall to your competitor. Exactly. exactly. I'm a user that I come to like a luxury store like this and then I go to McDonald's for lunch. What do you what do you what does your data make of that? We'll probably think that you are just window shopping. Maybe you'll go online and, and try to get get the same luxury clothes cheaper. Cosmos is active in China, Japan, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Their clients include Burberry, L'Oreal, and Budweiser. And Mirin says many of his clients want to expand into the U.S. next. Lubomiro Roche is the chief digital officer for L'Oreal and based in Paris. The story goes, you visited a store, uh, one of our stores, for example, and then you will receive, like, the day after in your, in your feed, on Facebook, on WeChat, an online ad that is super personalized to the experience you just had with the brand and then encouraging you to go back to the store uh, in order to, uh, to, to, to buy. Lubo Miro says that by doing this, they've seen an increase in converting offline casual shoppers into actual buyers. But this technology of tracking people offline is still in its early days. Critics might say that this is quite invasive to track someone offline and then start marketing to them online. We don't collect any personal data. We only analyze groups of anonymized IDs and for sure this new technology will create new questions but I can assure you that we, we respect, respect, respect privacy. In a US focused report, the New York Times found that at least 75 companies are receiving anonymous location data from users who have enabled location services. Sales of location targeted advertising is estimated to reach $21 billion this year. This is fairly Mark Lunt is a retail expert based in Hong Kong and working with clients across industries in Asia. He says people are increasingly okay to give up some privacy in favor of convenience. That, that Google know where you are, where you're going, where you've been, but the trade-off is Google Maps is a great product and it allows me to get from here to here, it allows me to predict how long it's going to take if I'm in a car. He refers to it as privacy fatigue, where users become apathetic to the fact that their information is being tracked. As often you, you look at an app and you think, well why on earth does this app need to have access to my contacts? to my history, to my shoe size, to, to, to everything else that, that's in there somewhere. Just think, well, they probably know it all already, so, so off we go. But this is different. You're not signing up for an app. In fact, you're not really signing up for anything at all. The technology behind Cosmos is part of a broader trend in retail that's bridging the experiences of shopping both online and offline. 
our obsession is to really address the consumer. Sometimes he would start offline, sometimes he would start online. At the end of the day, we really want to merge those two worlds. Each person I talk to for this story at some point brings up the importance of China. China really does lead the world. So it's very much a case, look at what's happening in China because it'll be happening you know, in a shopping mall near you fairly soon. In 2017, 20% of retail sales came from online shopping in China. Compare that to just 12% in the US. And in the four preceding years, China saw a 33% growth in online sales penetration, compared to just 11% in the US and 10% in the UK. Today in, in China, we don't, we don't say e-commerce and like offline or brick and mortar, we just say commerce. American and European companies will find it really hard to compete with Chinese because Chinese are just much, much faster and they are not arrogant. But China's advancement isn't just about technology, it also comes down to culture too. One would have to say privacy is much more highly valued by the Europeans than it is by the Chinese. Over time, it's hard to see the barriers to privacy going up, isn't it, from where they are now. And location tracking through your cell phone might just be the beginning. Lunt says some businesses are now using facial recognition technology too. There's a number of ways they can identify you as an individual. And if they've been tracking your online behavior, they can influence you appropriately when you're in the store.